which creepy urban legend turned out to be true. When I was about 12 years old a friend and I were playing in the woods that were known for being creepy while building a fort. A strange man snuck up behind us and yelled at us to get off his land and never come back yada yada. It really startled us as we knew the land was a public area and had never been threatened by an adult before. Several years later we found out he was an actual bank robber. Wanted by the FBI for years. We were building our fort a few feet from his stash. Oh shit. They must have based Gosling's character in place beyond the pines on him. His robbery routine was basically exactly what happened in that movie. The ghost squirrel in my hometown of Dorking, UK. There was a ghost squirrel, called Albie, that was only ever seen in the graveyard at the church in town. Turns out, it was an albino squirrel that had a nest in one of the trees in the graveyard. Unfortunately, he became roadkill a couple years back. Oh man I have one. When I was teen there were rumors of Snowsuit Man, a dude that used to wander the big park in my city at night. In the summer, in a snowsuit all done up from head to toe, hood and everything. It was rumored he used to ask people walking through the park to beat him up. I know. Pretty outrageous right? One night a bunch of us were chilling in said park being teens. Smoking weed and goofing around. All of a sudden in the distance we see a person. It wasn't unusual to see other people in the park. Even in the middle of the night like this. What is unusual is that you could see the person was dressed in white from head to toe. As he got closer a silence fell over all of us as we realized. Holy fucking shit that is a person. In a goddamn snowsuit. We were terrified and amazed all at once. He sat on a bench a little down the path from us. Just. Sitting there. One of my more adventurous. Or stupid maybe. Friends went over. Sat on the bench a bit then came back over. Snowsuit man didn't ask to get his ass kicked like we heard. In fact he didn't respond. Or even acknowledge my friend's presence. He did apparently. Smell absolutely awful. It was obvious. My friend said that he didn't take that thing off and shit and piss in there, as evidenced by the massive stains he saw when he got closer. So there you go. Well not exactly like we heard. Unless it wasn't a night he felt like getting beat up. The fucking snowsuit man exists. That seems terrifying either way. Just being unresponsive in there you know? Yeah I mean that's a good point. But how much can you trust someone who can sit in their own fesses and keep living? Out here in Washington there were rumors of a fairy house in the woods somewhere. One park ranger decided to go hunting for it, and he actually did find a tree house in the woods. When he looked inside he found a ton of child pornography. He took it down, and came back a while later, and found it had been put back up. They eventually found who had been using the tree house and arrested him. I live near a lake and there was an urban legend that there were huge lake monsters near the hydroelectric dam. Most people thought it was just some fisherman's tall tales. We all guessed it was just a twist on the classic the one that got away. Turns out divers went into the water behind the dam for a routine inspection to see if there was any damage after months of heavy flooding in the area. Apparently one of the divers got too close to what he originally thought was a large moss covered rock slash boulder until it moved and tried to latch onto the diver's arm. Apparently there are plus minus 200 pounds catfish behind the dam, which thrive on the dead fish that go through the hydroelectric portion of the dam. The agitated water makes it easier for the large catfish to breath and grow past what is commonly found in the area. And the lack of fishes as all commercial fishing is banned for at least 1000 meters means these fish are truly free to grow to truly enormous sizes. Indiana? My professor just mentioned a similar story last week while talking about cryptids. He said the divers refused to go back down. On a related note. Apparently some divers have sighted giant snails in Loch Ness along the walls of the loch. Indiana also has the beast of Busco, which may or may not have been a real turtle that was slightly exaggerated in size. Oh I have one. In Anchorage, people will tell the story of a woman who died after getting stuck in only knee deep mud out in turn again arm. The story has all the element. She was a new lie what? Rescuers were gathered around trying to help her, etc. And I think it's widely regarded as an urban legend. But it most certainly did happen. Her name was Adoana Dickerson. And it took place in September 1988. We all joked 
that our middle school pet teacher was a pedophile. He got arrested a few years ago for taking pictures of the female students and trading them for child porn. If you as a kid feel creeped out by an adult, enough that a whole group of kids joked that lol, that dude gives off a pedophile vibe. There's usually a reason. You don't know why. And you wouldn't be able to explain if an adult asked why. But it's there. Not really a legend. Unless you didn't believe it. My town and surrounding area has multiple old pirate smuggling tunnels under it. Going from towns to beaches. Most of the tunnels are under pub or shop basements. Also when I say pirate I do mean a pirates. Penzants. UK. Are any residents the very model of modern major general? I'm so sorry. I just had to. Not creepy. But in my small rural hometown. There was a rumor. That a bunch of city officials. Cops. Teachers. Business owners. ETC. Basically anyone a kid would see as an authority figure. Had massive orgies. Obviously as you grew up you came. To your senses. Until one year, when a teacher's husband stomped the absolute shit out of a local business owner in broad daylight. Turns out the legend wasn't just a legend. His wife was apparently a member of what was called the Hot Tub Club and he wasn't invited. A good chunk of local leaders got out at his hosting orders somewhat regularly. I'm more surprised it was kept secret as long as it was. Do you happen to live in Alabama? The community I'm from had a bunch of adult parties like that. I have an aunt and uncle who were quite involved in them. It was in northern Missouri. It was only a legend for like a week. But a kid went missing on the same property we lived on and everyone thought his brother had something to do with it. But police said no. He was kidnapped. Turned out the brother had killed his brother and buried him in our backyard. We had an older couple that would come into the store I worked at when I was 15. They clearly had mental development slash mental health problems and the rumor was they were siblings and the two teenage girls with them were their children. About 5 years later I'd find out someone had called the state about them and turns out, from what I remember, to be mostly true. The parents were apparently the result of incest and they carried on the family tradition. As it were. I think the state removed their daughters and put them in state custody since they weren't able to take care of themselves. And I don't remember what happened to the parents. I understand the McPoyle bloodline is very strong. Untainted for thousands of years. As pure as the driven snow. Snow as white as milk. In my hometown there was a local legend about a man. Who would sometimes be seen. Having sex with trees. Some called him Mr. Woodcock. But he was more commonly known as the tree shagger. I though it must be nonsense. But one night a friend and I were out walking his dog along an arrow tree lined lane we heard a grunting sound from the undergrowth and there he was he was wearing a long overcoat which had wrapped around a poor innocent tree and he had his trousers around his ankles as he defiled the shrubbery with a flagrant disregard for splinters considering all the animals children and adults that get molested by fuck whistles all the time i'm glad to hear of just one pervert who molests trees instead i'm always late to these things in Kenya Mombasa there was a story about a woman with long black hair and a white dress who would be seen around the beach at night. And it was to stop people from being at the beach swimming in the ocean. Turned out to be true as older lady would sleepwalk on the beach in her night as even she didn't know until locals found the courage to follow her home. My daughter is a sleepwalker and scares the shit out of me every time. One night she wore a glow in the dark bracelet when she went to bed. Around 4 a.m. I wake up to turn over, but right next to me I see a blue glow. That little psycho was standing right next to my bed still asleep. I gently grabbed her arm and said you okay, and she said, I came here because there was enough. I'm going back to my bed. When I bring it up in the mornings she never remembers. My kid never got up and walked around, but he frequently sat up in bed and sleep talked. One night when my kid was about 6. I heard him kind of sobbing and went in to check on him. I found him sitting up in bed and asked what was wrong. When he said I want a. I want a. Sea monkey. I knew he was sleep taking. I brought it up the next morning and he asked what's a sea monkey. We did in fact get sea monkeys after that. When I was young living rural Ontario we were told as children not to wander too far into the forest saying that a monster would get us and we wouldn't come home. If anybody knows who Roch Thayrealt is. That actually turned out to be painfully true. 
The Ant Hill Kids cult is absolute insanity. I'll give you a little taste, however. Therion Alt's PSD resistance came when one of his followers complained of pain the abdomen. Therion Alt forced her to undress, laid her on the kitchen table, punched her in the stomach, performed an enema by shoving a tube up her rectum, and filled her up with olive oil. Then he cut her stomach open, ripped out parts of her intestines with his bare hands, and he forced another member to stitch her up. Then, he shoved a tube down her throat and made the other women blow air into it. Unsurprisingly, the woman died the next day, of course. Therion Alt as a prophet had the powers of resurrection. This resurrection consisted of drilling a hole in the dead woman's skull and having every male member ejaculate into it. The woman remained dead. Besides these types of operations Roch had a number of often very sexually violent punishments. Personally I think the punishment and torture of Gabrielle Lavallee at the hands of Roch is the most sickening. Not for the faint of heart, it took the near-death experience of Gabrielle Lavallee to bring to light all these horrible crimes against humanity. Gabrielle had injured blow torches held to her genitals, eight of her teeth taken out, and a hypodermic needle breaking off in her spine. She had tried to escape, but could not live without the cult and went back. Roch took this as a good reason to cut off one of her fingers, mail her hand to a table, and amputate her entire arm with a hunting knife. Of course, Gabrielle did not see this as enough reason to actually leave. It took Roch amputating parts of her breasts and smashing her head in with an axe for her to actually flee and contact the authorities. I often wonder if Stephen King's Children of the Corn was based on a northern town in Maine. I don't recall the name of the town. But my friends and I stopped in on our way to the furthest US point east. The town struck me very weird, because every store clerk was like 14 to 17 maximum. Not just one or two stores every store. Aside from ourselves, we did not come across one adult in the tour, so as we were there, it was a depressed town, nearly a ghost town, and left me with a really unsettled feeling. The second story in full dark no stars about the author sounds a little too true. I grew up in the area he talks about and there's all kinds of crazy like that. That story oddly sounds familiar and I've never looked into it mostly because I don't want to find any names I know attached to it. Black Volga. In the 60s and 70s, there existed an urban legend in Poland that vampires in black limousines were kidnapping people, preferringly little children. It was a tale parents told their kids who would then tell their friends etc. Turns out it was a rumor that was spread by the Polish secret police who actually used black cars to kidnap people. The aim was that no one would believe someone who would report they had witnessed a kidnapping. I remember being wary around all black cars since I'd never seen a Volga. Also, I heard the version of the tale where they would kidnap people to steal their organs and then dump their bodies by the road, which is messed up. This version of the story was even told here in Germany, at least back in the 90s. We always had to stay away from black, Polish cars if we wanted to keep our kidneys. So black, Polish cars are the equivalent of automobile candy mountains. The Asylum Lake Tunnels in Kalamazoo are real. There is a small lake and wildlife area just off of WMU's campus, and for a long time there were rumors going around that they were still there and accessible. Well turns out that was true and there was an old set of stairs that was partially buried that lead to a wild up tunnel entrance. A few people used hand tools and ended up breaking part of the wall down and got inside, only to find the tunnels fully intact albeit a bit damp and murky. Somehow the authorities got wind and went and sealed the entrance again, but it's still very obvious where that was if you are really looking for them. Isn't it a terrible idea to go into originally sealed off areas or tunnels due to the possibility of gases being trapped in there? You could easily die without even being able to detect anything in the air. I would only attempt to go in there with the necessary precautions. Welcome to the world of AIDS is an urban legend about a man meeting a woman at a bar, going back to his place to sleep together, only to have him wake up to her being gone and the famous slogan welcome to the world of AIDS written on his bathroom mirror. The urban legend has many different versions variations. It was just a parable about casual sex and risk. This was largely considered an urban legend. That is, until stealth posing actually turned out to be a very real thing. Modern actual cases involve a British man named Daryl Rao, who, 
already knowing he had HIV, would send a text after sex to his many victims saying things like I have HIV lol, oops and I'm riddled. Others have also been convicted for knowingly doing this on Craigslist. Yeah. Happened to my friend a few years ago from a grinder hookup. After the one night stand. He received a message along the lines of have fun with HIV. He freaked. Got tested. And found out he was positive. The human waste that infected him had already deleted all traces of himself on Grinder, So no charges could be pressed. Luckily he is doing well these days. No full blown AIDS, but deals with occasional bone slash hip degeneration issues. Creepy Pete that used to hang out in the kids pool every Saturday at the leisure center actually turned out to be a pedo. He got arrested a couple years ago. When we were little the kids in the pool would swim through his legs and the parents would just laugh. Pedas were basically urban legends back then. Way too true now. This happened to me when I was a child. He lets us swim through his legs and hang on to his back while he swam up and down the pool. Sometimes he would even ask us multiple times if we would play with him. Now that I look back I cannot believe that no one did anything about it. Not really an urban legend, but a fish cafe in my hometown says that its supports are made out of whale bones. Turns out many years ago a whale got stranded on a nearby island and died and the owner took some rib bones and used it as arches for his business. We've got an old bar named after a ship that was wrecked on the nearby shores. Took me a few years to learn that the bar was actually made with wood from the shipwreck, which in the 20th century they then covered with bricks. Pretty neat. Things would go missing in this little vacation community and people attributed it to some mysterious dude. Turned out there was one. He lived out in the woods for 27 years without ever talking to anyone. He said hi to a hiker once during that 27 years. Best friend he ever had. I grew up in that area. When we were kids things would go missing and other strange stuff would happen and we never knew what to make of it. It all made so much sense when he was finally caught and the story came out. What kind of stuff? Any of your stuff? Nothing of mine that I remember. We had a neighbor that was one of those people that collected items and his yard was full of anything you can think of. I played there with his kids a lot and there was an old camper on his property that we would sleep out in. Like a clubhouse. We put all kinds of stuff in there. I remember there was a small transistor radio that went missing and other stuff that made sense later. Like sleeping bags or food. That creepy old guy living down the street was actually the Golden State Killer. He lived in my neighbor. I've passed his house every day for years. I never talked to him, but it's crazy to think as kids we would play at the house two houses away from his. The second creepiest part of this is that he lived in your neighbor. Only possible explanation is his neighbor is the mum, right? Sewer alligators. If alligators and other animals are flushed or disposed of into plumbing, yeah they can survive and hang out. The most famous Los Angeles alligator was Rigi who now lives in a zoo. He was 6 feet long when captured and lived in a lake in South Bay 4 years. 